subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzo. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 15th of October. Two army personnel killed in counter-terrorism operation in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Bangladesh Prime Minister Hasina warns of tough action against perpetrators of communal violence post temple attacks. and people in nepal and india celebrate vijay dashmi festival with rituals and prayers and now for all the details two indian army personnel were killed in a gun battle during counter terrorism operations in punch district of india's jammu and kashmir territory on friday this came after five army personnel lost their lives in a similar encounter in the district on october 11 two indian army personnel including a jco junior commissioned officer on friday succumbed to their injuries sustained in a gun battle with terrorists in punch district of india's jammu and kashmir territory the jco and the soldier were critically injured in the encounter that broke out during counter terrorism operation in mender sub division of punch on thursday night vehicular traffic along the rajouri punch national highway had been suspended as operations had intensified in the mountainous area till the last reports came in this came after another jcu and four army personnel were killed in a similar encounter in suran coat area of punch on october 11 security agencies have blamed pakistan based terror outfits for a spate in terror activities in jammu and kashmir in recent days Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday dedicated seven new state-run defence firms, replacing the Ordnance Factory Board to improve self-reliance in the country's defence preparedness. Launching the defence firms, PM said the goal is to make India the world's biggest military power on its own. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched seven new defence companies and said. they will be a massive base for india's military power the indian government has decided to convert the ordnance factory board from a government department into 700 person government owned corporate companies in order to improve self reliance in the defense preparedness of the country the companies will manufacture equipments such as ammunition explosives army vehicle and advanced weapon among others In a video address at the event PM said India is taking new resolutions to build a new future 41 ordinance factories ko naye swarup mein kiye jane ka nirnay saat nayi companies ki ye shuruaat desh ki isi sankalp yatra ka hissa hai ye nirnay पिछले 15-20 साल से लटका हुआ था मुझे पूरा भरोसा है कि ये सभी सात कंपनियां आने वाले समय में भारत की सैन्य ताकत का एक बहुत बड़ा आधार बनेगी द प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो अर्ज स्टार्टअप टू बी पार्ट ऑफ दिस जर्नी इन द कंट्रीज डिफेंस सेक्टर इंडिया डिफेंस मिनिस्टर राजनाथ सिंह हु वॉज ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट ड्यूरिंग द लॉन्च सेट The center is aiming to bring India among the top countries across the globe in the field of the defense sector. In news from Bangladesh, Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has issued a stern warning against those involved in the attacks on Hindu temples and several Durga Puja festival venues and communal violence that followed. Hasina on Thursday promised the perpetrators will be hunted down and punished. Videos that have gone viral on social media depict violent mobs demolishing several venues of Durga Puja and vandalizing Hindu temples. Communal violence broke out on Wednesday after rumors broke about alleged desecration of the Holy Quran at a festival venue in Chittagong district. Several incidents of vandalism were later reported. 
India's foreign ministry on Thursday termed the reports of violence as disturbing and said its consulates were in contact with Bangladeshi authorities. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan assured Parliamentary Committee of the ruling PTI party on Thursday that the issue of appointment of new spy agency chief had been amicably settled by him and Army Chief General Kamar Javid Bajwa. Pakistan has been gripped in speculations that there is rift between the civilian government and the powerful military, with opposition parties slamming the Prime Minister for mishandling the issue. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan assured Parliamentary Committee of the ruling Pakistan Tehreek in South Party during a meeting on Thursday that the issue of appointment of new Chief of the Inter Services Intelligence or ISI had been amicably settled by him and Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa. Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry told the media that a notification regarding the appointment would be issued in two to three days. Chaudhry, however, denied the PM would interview the candidates, saying that he will just meet with them instead, reports suggest. Pakistan has been gripped in speculations that there is rift between the civilian government and the powerful military after Army announced the appointment of Lieutenant General Nadeem Ahmed Anjum as the new Directorate General of ISI last week, a notification which is meant to come from the PM's office. Reports suggest PM Khan wanted Lieutenant General Fez Hamid to continue on the post. Meanwhile, President of Multi-Party Opposition Alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement and JUIF Party Chief Molana Fazlur Rahman on Thursday slammed the government for mishandling the appointment issue. He said PM Khan has started wrangling with the army, which brought him into power. <laughs> जो इनके मोहसिन हैं अब उनको लड़ गया है और डीजीआईएसआई का मामला उसने मिस हैंडल किया है एस पर लॉ द प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज द लीगल राइट टू अपॉइंट द आईएसआई चीफ इन कंसल्टेशन विद द आर्मी चीफ मोर न्यूज़ फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तान इंटरनेशनल एयरलाइंस द ओनली इंटरनेशनल कैरियर ऑपरेटिंग रेगुलरली आउट ऑफ द अफगान कैपिटल हैज सस्पेंडेड फ्लाइट्स टू काबुल दिस वीक after what it called heavy-handed interference by Taliban authorities. The suspension took place as the Taliban government ordered the airline to cut ticket prices to the levels of before the fall of Western-backed Afghan government in August. Pakistan International Airlines PIA suspended flights to Afghan capital Kabul on Thursday after what it called heavy-handed interference by Taliban authorities. This took place after the Taliban government ordered PIA to cut ticket prices to the levels of before the fall of the Western-backed Afghan government in August. PIA is the only international carrier operating regularly out of Kabul. PIA spokesman Abdullah Hafiz Khan cited unfavorable working environment and non-conducive environment to operate international flights as the reason behind the move. With most airlines no longer flying to Afghanistan, tickets for flights to the Pakistani capital Islamabad have been selling at exorbitant rates. Tickets on PIA are charged for as much as 2,500 US dollars as compared with 120 to 150 US dollars before. The airline defended the ticket prices saying the operation was not very lucrative financially and flights to Kabul had heavy insurance premiums. One of the main criticisms that came on PIA was the fact that PIA was charging a hefty amount uh, in terms of fare between uh, Kabul and Islamabad. But that was because of the fact that PIA was paying heavy insurance premiums on our flights to Kabul. And because of those insurance premium, it was just not uh, feasible for us uh, to operate on the same price level that was there between August 15. Uh, PIA used to make break even only if it had over 300 passengers to, uh, you know, on a particular flight. This has also drawn sharp criticism from Kabul residents who say that Afghans cannot afford high price of tickets. Flights between Afghanistan and Pakistan have been severely limited since Kabul airport was reopened last month in the wake of the chaotic evacuation of more than 100,000 Westerners and vulnerable Afghans following the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan's on mid-August. In news from Afghanistan, 
A large explosion tore through a Shiite mosque in the southern Afghan city of Kandahar during Friday prayers, killing more than 30 and wounding scores of people, officials said. The second massive attack in a week targeting worshippers from the minority said that that toll was expected to rise. Moving on, orphanages play an important role in Afghanistan, where tens of thousands of civilians have been killed in wars that have ravaged the country for more than 40 years. The lack of funding since the Taliban took back control of the country is forcing orphanage officials into tough choices. As cash runs low, an orphanage in Afghan capital is struggling to feed its children. While many girls across Afghanistan remain at home and their brothers go to school, nine-year-old orphan Samira attends classes in her orphanage every day with hopes of becoming a doctor. Samira hails from the northeastern Badakhshan province and has been at the Shamsa Children's Village Orphanage for two years. But as Samira's orphanage runs out of funding and now food, there is a chance that her dreams could be crushed. Ahmed Khalil Mayan, program director at Shamsa Children's Village, says he is cutting back on the amount of fruit and meat he gives the children each week because their home is running out of money. We don't have enough funding. Donation is unfortunately at zero level. Uh, bank, bank operations are very limited. Uh, they are providing just $200 per week. So such a big project cannot be done by $200. As you see the whole project, it's not possible for us. And we are facing problems providing foods and other necessity, necessity items for these children. For the last two months since the Taliban seized control of the country and millions of dollars in aid suddenly dried up, Mayan has been desperately reaching out to donors who supported him before. He fears if the situation continues, the orphanage will not be able to function much longer. For the orphanage to shut down would be devastating for the children who receive mathematics, English and computer lessons as well as physical education, not to mention food and shelter. Facing an economic crisis as winter approaches, Taliban officials have urged Western governments to resume aid donations and called on the United States to lift a block on more than $9 billion of Afghan central bank reserves held overseas. Devotees across Nepal and India on Friday celebrated the auspicious occasion of Vijay Dashmi with religious fervor by performing prayers and rituals. Hindu women in parts of India also smudged vermilion on each other to mark the end of the festival of Durga Puja, dedicated to Goddess Durga. Hindu devotees throng temples to offer prayers and make offerings to celebrate Vijay Dashmi or the Shen festival in Nepal's capital Kathmandu on Friday. Quite a few devotees, however, performed a unique ritual on the occasion as they lied down and covered their body with cow dung and placed lit oil-fed lamps over it to thank the gods for answering their prayers. Their family members, in the meantime, kept a watch to ensure that no lamp falls. <laughs> Meanwhile, donned in their traditional colourful dresses, married Hindu women in parts of India smudged vermilion on each other on Friday as part of Sindur Khila tradition to celebrate the end of Durga Puja festival which marks the victory of Goddess Durga over the evil buffalo demon king Mahishasur.
पिछले साल बहुत खराब था हम लोग माँ दुर्गा का उतना अच्छा से पूजा पाठ उतना नहीं कर सके कोविड के चलते लेकिन इस बार माँ के आशीर्वाद से बहुत अच्छे से हम लोग ये हम लोग स्वस्थ हैं बस माँ से यही है कि कोविड का ये जो है काल ये चला जाए हम लोग का यही आशीर्वाद रहे The annual Vijay Dashmi celebrations conclude with processions to water bodies that carry idols of Goddess Durga accompanied by music and chants after which the idols are immersed into water for dissolution. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.